You should be the host there. I really love it, aren't you? We're both monster people, diehard monster people, and we want them to do well. The Red 78 with Alan Quinlan and Neve Briggs. Nobody knows monster rugby better. I'd like to think I know a lot. I'm Alan Quinlan, and this is episode 19 of the Red 78 here on the Rugby Channel. channel. Welcome along. As always, I'm joined by uh, Monster legend Neve Briggs. Uh, how are you? Not a great weekend for you, Neve. Uh, Spurs were beat 2 0 by Wolves on Saturday, and your team, UL Bowes, lost as well. So give me a synopsis of how, you're, how you were feeling after all that, and have you recovered? Uh, Sunday was definitely a day of mourning, I think, for sure. Um, desperately disappointed um, about the game on, on Saturday evening versus Railway. They were they were so much better than us. We can't have too many complaints. Um, but if it, the result ultimately ruled us out of the, the AIL final, 26th of February. So we've got a rally now. We've got Obelvo this weekend and um, a true test for our character, I think, because we were bitterly disappointed with how we performed. But, um, you know, we've got to live and learn very young squad. So um, I suppose it's my job as a coach to make sure that we can um, react and rebound well. Um, as for Conte and Spurs, I think it's a last cause at this stage. Um, but um, yeah, look, I think so it's going back, results. Going back to your own match, um, when you say you've got Belvedere this weekend, and you, was that a semi final or did it rule you out of? It ruled out of the final. The way, the way the top four went was that it was literally um, you play each other either once or twice, depending on the weeks, because we shortened the season in order to have all the internationals playing. Um, which is great because they've, you know, they've, they've produced some brilliant rugby over the last while. Um, but because of that, there's no semi-final final. It just went straight run off into the top two into the final and the bottom two into third, four playoff. It just so happens that it's all sorted a week out from the finals weekend. So we still have to play Belvedere or oh, Belvedere next Saturday. And then we play them again the following Saturday in the third, four playoff. So um, we've got to aim to be to win both. I think that's, that, that'll help to probably ease a little bit of the pain. So a bad weekend all round. Munster were beaten on Friday night, which we'll talk about in a minute, 13 11. Ireland were beaten 30 points at 24 in, in Paris. I was there doing the commentary for that. You were beating your own team, and Spurs were beaten, but Liverpool won 1 0 at Sunday, so it wasn't all bad. <laughs> um, we're going to flip this over this week um, because yeah. you know I put a tweet out today just asking what people's thoughts were at the Glasgow game. Um, should there be changes? What do they need to improve on? What um, did you, uh, before we go into tweets, what did you think of the, the game? Which Glasgow one? Game. The Irish Glasgow. game? The Glasgow, the Glasgow game. Glasgow. Um, I think Munster made mistakes. Uh, obviously, mm. the conditions were, were horrendous and it was very difficult to play um, in that wind and rain. Obviously, when you're playing the 4G pitch, it helps a little bit, and it it, it takes at least underfoot. You've you've a so, you've a bit of solid ground. Um, like I said to you last week, um, it was always going to be a tricky game for Munster and a hard win. Um, I think Glasgow had 12 full internationals in their starting 15, which would indicate that there's a lot of power and quality and experience. And so, in some sense, I was enthused by the 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 effort. I think Munster were very, very strong defensively. Um, they they got stuck in themselves into Glasgow. They got one turnover, breakdown penalties, a good few of them at, at certain at certain times in the game. Um, but a little bit naive in 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 some of the mistakes they made. They had no clean line breaks in the game. Um, the scrum, you know, they lost four scrums out of twelve, which um, is probably a bad return. Only lost two lineouts, but it's similar to Ireland on, on, on Saturday in Paris. They were scrappy. They were scrappy lineouts. Yeah. So, uh, and some dis- decision making, I thought um, it was a little bit predictable at times. Um, a lot of going lateral over and back. And they were trying to move the ball. I think um, Munster, 131 passes, Glasgow only under 113. So they were criticized. Um, Going right back to that Connacht game, it was forty-five passes in the game. They are trying to play a little bit more, so they've got to get give give them credit for that. But I just thought a little bit sloppy at times, yeah. and they turned the ball over. Um, they conceded t- ten turnovers, which is look, it's not a bad. You're always going to turn the ball over at times, but I just think 
one of the big areas, um, one, one big decision in the game for me was, well, obviously there was a couple. Just before half time, Munster get a penalty, Ben Healy, three all. You're thinking, get in at half time at three all. And, and, and you know, it was a, even though they were ragged at times, particularly at the start of the game, Munster, um, I thought that they rallied well and they defended really well. And they were up for the physical challenge. But they, Ben Healy gets the penalty right from the kickoff. Um, Neil Cronin is blocked down by Scott Cummings and can see the try there just before half time. And in games like that, tight margins, uh, blustery, wet conditions, there wasn't going to be a, it wasn't going to be a big sc- high scoring game. And that was just kind of a crucial moment where they give seven points to Glasgow. Now, credit to Scott Cummings, but I think if Neil Cronin looks back on it, he was a little bit hesitant in the box kick and probably needed a little... didn't have a lot of help in terms protection. of blockers either. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. He needed a bit of protection there. But overall, I thought, um, look, it was um, it was a valiant effort. I know they probably don't want to hear... Um, lacked a little bit of quality at times. Yeah. The decision in the second half, I think it was around 56 minutes when they got a penalty in midfield. Um, Fraser Brown got yellow carded for slapping the ball out of the ruck when Neil Cronin was trying to break. Uh, yellow card, penalty there. I just thought it wasn't the right decision to kick it to goal. I think Glasgow now down to seven forwards. Put it, Try and get it down into the 22 and, and put some pressure on them there. It was, it was a, look, we know Ben Healy is, is a long range kicker, but the wind was swirling everywhere. It was always going to be different, difficult. He missed that kick. And a couple of minutes later, Glasgow are kicking a penalty to go 13-3 up. So, and and particularly before that, they had a kickable penalty when they went to the corner and Johnny, uh, Richie Gray, uh, broke them all up and, and Munster got turned over. So look, I thought that one was, they should have put it into the corner. Two critical moments the block down from Scott Cummins and the decision to go for the long range penalty when, when Glasgow were down to 14 men. Yeah, I think I think you've kind of summed it up really well there. It's funny how after the Irish game we were speaking about a decision um to not to go for points as well. And um and I think it's difficult when you're on the pitch. Like I I, I watched that game, I saw Ben Healy saying, Yeah, I can kick it, and he just got a back kicker. But um just in relation to some of the tweets, so obviously you put out a tweet earlier on people's thoughts on it so Keelan comes back and says similar to you handling errors were a big killer that was a big thing for me okay I know that it was very wet and windy but a lot of time they were getting stripped of the contact Um, I didn't protect the ball well in the ruck was there for the end Um, was there for taking until the end Casey and Coombs both start this Friday obviously the lads are back in Um, honestly Tony Walsh I actually like this I honestly think some same squad should be named Give them a chance chance to make amends. A lot of squad need minutes after a forced extended break. Um, Magella says, Ben Healy should not have been taken off. Dave Hines is definitely friends with you. He says, John Hodden needs to start. Um, and Anya Kyle, on the flip of that, says, I'd like to see Crowley start with Casey. So, um, a reaction, I, I, I think the fact that peop, people and supporters are watching uh, Munster trying to move the ball, trying to play, um, I'd like to have seen them probably run to try and let in run towards shoulders as opposed to bodies. I felt at times it became very square to to the actual body of the defender, and therefore it's really difficult to hold on to the ball in that kind of in that conditions. But um, yeah, look, I, I like some of the stuff they tried to play, but you're right. I think it was just it was a horrible, horrible evening, and it was really difficult to get the ball. Um, get any kind of key phases together. And I think it was a case of pinning anybody down in each corner in their 22 and try and get them to play out as opposed to, to you. So, um, but they'll get a lot of learnings from that. And I think some some good performances too, to be fair. I think back row were very good again. Um, Chris Cloth is back in for his first game in a long time. I thought he did quite well. Still gives away a lot of penalties. Um, but I suppose your seven has to play on the edge. And sure, you know that better than anybody else. Um, but yeah, so uh, look, I do think that is. Is there any reason? And I know this might sound a bit harsh that Chris Clote is getting selected when his contract's up at the end of the season. He's probably going to Bath. He's been linked with Bath. When you have John Hodnett and Alex Kendall on the bench, would there be not like? Look, I know you can't just discount the guy, but I think this is a time where Kendall and, and Hodnett need lots of game time. 
yeah, it's a really interesting point. I actually didn't even think of it that way, to be honest. And um, for me, every time I see John Hodden, I think I'm starting to jump on your uh, love affair with you with him because um, I think he's he oozes class, doesn't he? He's just ridiculously powerful. And Kendall, you know, we saw when he got a run of games with the under twenties how good he is. And I know it's difficult to transfer that to senior rugby at times, but um, yeah, look, that's a, a very interesting valid point. I think the thing you've got to also try and balance though, Quinny, is the fact that um, if one of them to pick up an injury um, and you need Clotho to play, you, you know, you probably haven't played I think, since November. It's, it's probably a little bit unfair to say that because Chris Clotho is a very good player. He's been out injured for a bit, <clears throat> hasn't played much rugby. But I just think, yeah. you know, the other two, um, they need game time and lots of game time under their belts. And, um, you know, John Hadden was out for such a long but period as well. And I do think that was yeah. his eighth game this year. So I think that was a general team, though, across the course. Like, Lecron in second game now in a row. It's great to see that happening. But I thought Sebo, you know, lacked, looks like he lacked game time as well, to be fair. Um, and Rory Scandal hasn't played in a, a few weeks. So you're, you're definitely looking at something like trying to get as many minutes in. Big thing is that when a squad is so big, and here's the the reality of it, will we see smaller squads going forward now? Because when a squad is so big, you're trying to give everybody game time. And it's just, it's very difficult to try and keep everybody happy, but also trying to keep everybody fresh in minutes. So the, any other standout performances or I thought John Klein scoring a try uh, with ten, nearly 10 minutes to go. I, I just thought that summed up his effort. And look, I know he's coming for a fair bit of criticism after the work, getting selected for the World Cup in 2019. But I just love the way Klein goes about his business. His work rate is 100%. His skill set isn't the best skill set in the world. He's not a footballing second row, but I just think the effort level and just getting that try at the end... Um, putting Munster back in a position to, to, to maybe get a draw or go on and win it. Obviously, Jack Crowley missed the penalty, uh, missed the conversion, which, which would have put the level. And I think that would have been, you know, to get a draw out of it would have been really, really decent performance. I think they were probably frustrated with, with the result a little bit themselves. Uh, but losing bonus point there, even before the game, wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. But I thought John Klein was... Um, was put in a really, really strong performance. Uh, Chris Farrell as well came up with a few big turnovers. Attack yeah, he's was, playing well, isn't he? He is, yeah. And um, he'd probably jump on the Are You Watching Andy Farrell bandwagon in the next week or two because I think I'm probably giving a clue who I'll pick next week. But I just think, you know, obviously he's he's fallen out of favour with 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 the Irish squad and probably suffered a little bit with with Munsters type of game that they, they've played and what they're trying to do and uh, the disruption throughout the season. So I think he needs to play lots of games and um, I thought he played really well the other night, but um, I think it'll be disappointing overall, the results, and puts him in a di tricky position. I've gone through the results, a few or the, the fixtures. They've got, obviously, we'll talk about Edinburgh in a little bit, but they play Edinburgh on Friday night um, and then Dragons. They have two home games. They must win home games. And I think they should, you know, deep down, you'd be targeting bonus point wins in both those. Um, won't be easy because then you're on the road for, for in March uh, playing the Bulls and the Lions. So I think it's, 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 they've got to beat Edinburgh. Edinburgh have played 10 games. They do. Yeah. And they're four, they're four points ahead. Munster have played nine games and 30, 30 points. So, um, Munster have to win this game get into that top four bonus point win will put them level with Glasgow still with a game in hand um, actually they won't have a game Glasgow played 10 Munster played 9 so Friday night they'll be level with Glasgow on games played but they could go level with them in, in third and third in the table so um, it's really important but look um, I thought there was positives in the game and, and the fight was uh, the big positive for me, they stood up physically and bar the Scott Cummings try, Glasgow never really looked... Really looked, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like scoring and uh, cutting Their them up. Defense like, Monster had no clean breaks, Glasgow had two. And that kind of yeah. sums up the condition. So um, it's a bit of a learning curve for him again. Um, if they had their time back, I think they would have kicked to the corner and not gone for a long-range penalty because yeah. uh, it was cru a crucial period of that. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so we'll move along anyway. That's that game semi analyzed. We haven't gone into in depth to it. Um, Munster had more possession 56% possession and more territory. So when you look at the stats for this game, Munster, like stats do tell a lie. Um, but I just thought the reaction to fight their way back into the game was, was a positive one. They need to be more clinical and protect the ball more, as one of our tweeters said there. So uh, just before we move on, we want you to be involved. So rather than me sending out a late tweet, again, send us your thoughts, even if we don't put up a tweet. Uh, you can tweet us at Rugby Channel or either of us to our personal Twitter accounts. Leave a comment on YouTube um, and we'll try and read out as many as those comments next week. A um, lot of distractions with the Irish match. Um, yeah. And as you say, sometimes the, the URC wasn't supposed to be on during the Six Nations, but because of all the COVID disruptions, we're going to have matches in the next few weeks. Uh, we're just going to move on to the uh, Andy Farrell, are you watching piece? And this week, it's it's your selection. Again, it's, my it's, turn. it's your turn this time. Um, we don't have a lot of Munster players on the Irish team. We had one more at the weekend with Joey Carberry starting, Andrew Conway and Ty, Ty Byrne on the, on the team. But maybe one for the future is, is is going to be your selection that maybe Andy Farrell will be watching him. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, for sure. My uh, Andy Farrell that you're watching is uh, Scott Buckley. I think um, he's a huge talent. Um, I first saw him in the build-up to that Wasps game when I went out to the train session and I was blown away just by his size, his powerful, he's, you know, willing to learn and um, just had a really good attitude. And then obviously we saw him play in Wasps, man the match for the first senior appearance away in Europe. Um, but so, yeah, look, I think he's, I think he's, he's got a huge amount of potential. He was a back rower, converted to a hooker from school, so CBC into UCC. Um, and I do know, look, he's obviously still very young, but he's missed out on his whole under-20 season because he um, had a very, very bad hamstring injury towards the end of the night. Pretty sure lads were telling so me. So he, he didn't play for Ireland under-20, and that's no. why I was looking to, to yeah. see why um, yeah, when I was checking his stats. Injured. Yeah, yeah, he's injured. And um, for every time I've seen him play this season, like obviously since the Wasps game, for me, it's how busy he is around the park. He's obviously, just, you know, knows his detail in terms of line out, but also it's just his ability because because he's a back rower, he's explosive, very good on the ball, very good on the ground, um, has a bit of football in him. Um, and I do think, yeah, definitely he he's he could be, you know, the hooker for the starting hooker for Munster for the next however so, many years. So when when we pick these players just for the listeners, it's uh unfortunately we're not picking guys who who uh should be on the Irish team now. We're we're picking players that have that potential um obviously with Jack O'Donoghue a few weeks ago he has a couple of caps um John Hadnett doesn't have any caps but last week I picked him and, and he has this potential so you believe that Scott Buckley can go on and be at that level and and play for Ireland yeah I do I really do I think I'm so impressed every time I see him play and I just think if you're looking at young Munster players who have potential to you know, break that glass ceiling and and probably be consistent at that level. I I I think it's I think he's one of them. I think he's got exceptional talent. But what 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 would suggest that he's good enough to go and play for Munster and play for Ireland, be a regular starter? Who who's he like? We just look at Ronan Keller and yeah, you see, he's and Dan, he's Dan, as explosive Dan Sheehan, as Dan them. Sheehan at the moment. Yeah. What they're doing and they're kind of. A modern, he's, new, modern type hookers. I, he is one of them, Quinny. I think he really has the the ability to be like that. I think we've got to be a little bit patient now at the moment because he's new enough to the position as hooker. He's obviously come back from a very long term injury. He's unfortunately out injured again. Um, so from that element, it's obviously a, you know a lot of frustration for him. But I just think that if you're looking at this new evolution of the hooker or the front row, um he has a potential to fit that mould, I think. Um, you know, he just, for me, has that little bit of X factor that you can see when you see Dan Sheehan or Ronan Keller in that 15-metre channel. You can see Scott Buckley there too because he has that ability to step and fend. He has the ability to throw the pass. So, um, if, you're, so if you're um if you're Niall Scannell, Dermot Barn, and uh, what, what would they think of... Uh, 
this situation that Neve Briggs is saying this guy can go on and play for Munster. Is he going to take their places? I, I think there's every potential he has. And now, to be fair, I think Jira Barham was very good last weekend. Um, but I just think that... You need the competition, though, anyway, don't 100%. you? 100%. I was going to say, you've got a free competition and, and the spaces. And, and if that's going to push Niall Scan and Jim Barron to, to continue to get better and develop, then that's a win-win for Munster. But I just do think in the next few years, we're going to look at, you know, we're going to see this guy starting regularly, big games. And, um, and you know, I'd like to think that he has the potential to go into a green jersey. Okay. Well, we'll. Uh, I'm sure. Andy do you, do you not what, agree, Quinny? No, I do. I do. I well, from what I've seen from Scott Buckley, like he has that potential, and you never know. Sometimes with, with young players, you get an inkling or, or an instinct about them, and I, there's certainly an explosive kind of an aggressiveness to 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 him um, that he can add a real dimension to any team he plays in. He's he's powerful. He's explosive. Um, Obviously, you got to have your fundamentals right, your line out throwing and, and being able to scrummage. But there's certainly um, there's certainly positives there and certainly a lot of potential, which he has that little bit of spark that I spoke about, Hodnett, that can go up the levels. Um, and hopefully it works out for him because I think he's there is um, there's a gap there to grab hold of that hooker's jersey. And I know when I mentioned Niall Scandal, the experience he has, I think he's not going to give up the jersey. Uh, Dermot Barron has come on the scene and really kind of shown a lot of promise as well. But I think, you know, Scott Buckley, there's there's a like all competition with when I played, you know, you have six six international back rows going for three slots. Um, just look at Sheehan and, and Kelleher and Leinster now, two two internationals. I'm sure Dan Sheehan want to want to sit in the bench behind Ronan Keller all the time. They're incredible players and they've got to they've got to that level now. And I just think, yeah, Buckley looks like that he has that potential. But we with all these guys that we're mentioning, again, they're young players and they, it's we're talking about the word potential. They've got to do it for Munster on a consistent basis and kind of grab hold of the jersey there and you know, grab hold of the perception, change the perception that these guys can go on and play at this level. So I think Buckley has it. I saw some stuff. In, in, in that Wasp performance, um, the game he came on at Wasps in, in Thoman Park, uh, there's something about him that would indicate, yes, he can go to a higher level, but and hopefully he does. He's not, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if he's going to be involved this week or we, we don't have a team against Edinburgh, but I'd love to see him get some more opportunities tr- tr- throughout this period. I'm sure he will, you know, as well when they... You know, they play the Dragons and then go to South Africa. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on there. Um, so I'm sure Andy Farrell watches every week and he'll be delighted that now we've we've put Scott Buckley forward for a little, keep a little eye out on him. But like I say, the, you have to play. You have to take yeah. all of the provincial jersey first. OK, let's move on. Um, they've got Edinburgh Friday night. It's hard yeah. to I kind of analyse um, this. One of your tweeters there, was it Anya, said... Uh, we better get her name right just to make sure to give her the credit for it. Which what? Tell me what they said. Just about uh, about same selection or trying to get a bit of continuity. It wasn't. Um, it's actually one of your tweeters, Quinny. Okay. Um, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I think it's no. Only said she likes to see Crowley and Casey start. Um, okay, well we talk about that then. Edinburgh Friday night. Casey is uh, Craig Casey is going to be back with the squad. And Dave Kilcoyne is going to be back for the squad. They need games. Big boost to have both those guys back. Yeah, that's and part of why he definitely you definitely need to look for. Yeah. You will you will have a hunger and a desire from the players to try and perform and maybe put their hand up for maybe a look in for the Italian game. Yeah. Um, so who else plays and what do they need to do to beat Edinburgh on Friday night? Yeah, look, I think it's hard to know too because I was looking up today and Scotland haven't announced, I don't think, the players that they've released back to Edinburgh, but Edinburgh have 14 internationals um, involved in the six years Six Nations squad on their books. Now, obviously, the likes of McNally and WP Nell, Scoman and Hamish Watson won't be there. Maybe Darcy Graham probably won't because they've all started those games. Yeah, like, Gil like, Chris Dieter. Yeah, so... You look at maybe like, like some Mark Bennett or Blair Kinghorn, they haven't had a huge amount of game time either. So both very good uh, footballers. Um, Mark Bennett's probably good centre. So 
Um, yeah, look, I think for Munster's point of view, I think they've got to look at obviously those Irish boys coming back in. Um, Gavin Coombs played last weekend um, against Edinburgh and definitely is the type of player that needs game time, I think, to get himself up to match speed. Um, so a second game two weeks in a row would be huge for him. You'd definitely like to see um, him kind of dominate a small bit more. Um, big thing, I think, for Munster that be open is that conditions are going to be much better than than what they were last weekend. Um, but yeah, I look, don't I think, think they are going to be Neve. No, I don't. <laughs> the weather, the weather is isn't, yeah. isn't good. Um, but I'd like to see, I'd like to see Healy continue on. I'd imagine Casey will come in because Neil, Neil Crohn's had a couple of games now. Um, but you know who else I actually would be interested to see who backs up Craig Casey because I thought Paddy Patterson came on, injected a lot of energy last weekend. So. Um, but from a backline point of view, I think you're looking sim- something similar in terms of um, Scandal and Chris Farrell, Haley, um, and then it's a case of whether you put in Shane Daly, Calvin Nash, or Zebo, Shane Daly, you know, those kind of combinations. Um, but I, I don't think they'll stray too far away from that um, Glasgow squad from last weekend. I think that um, it's just going to be important for them to get as much game time as they can because I think it's a break after next week. So Leinster beat Edinburgh at 26-7 um, at the weekend. Um, and again, I was looking at the the, the teams, um, the Edinburgh team, and there's there's not a lot of big names that you would kind of... When I picked looked at Glasgow last week, there's lots of internationals like Sam Johnson, Richie Gray, um, Duncan Weir, George Horn, you're you're picking guys who played a lot for Scotland the last number of years. There's, there's a lot of younger players in this Edinburgh squad who are not in the same position. They did cause Leinster some issues and problems, but you know Leinster I usually can cope. Yeah, I thought when Edinburgh looked to get the ball to wit, they were very good. They looked like they put a lot of pace onto the ball, um, and they tried to. Um, get to, in that 15-meter channel, try and put Leinster under pressure there. And they tried, they managed it a couple of times. It's just that Leinster is so good, I think. But um, they are dangerous when they're playing. And I think Mike Blair is a very astute coach. So I um, don't think it'll definitely, I don't think it'll necessarily be, um, you know, a game that Munster will be expected to win, if that makes any sense. Will be expected to win? or, or Well, I don't think that they'll, like, you like to think, like, I thought they'd win against Glasgow last weekend, to be fair. Um, but then when I saw the conditions, it was a complete leveller. I think you like to think that at home against Edinburgh, they'll win. But I do think that this Edinburgh squad will be better than than maybe what the ordinary supporter might think they are because they're missing so many players. But I just do think that they have quality across the park. Will Munster be going for a bonus point win on Friday night or just a win, which would be satisfactory to you? Edinburgh will be quite dangerous, just to yeah, win. I, I, I do think Edinburgh will be quite dangerous and I do think that um, a win, I think they've got to go after the win and then I don't like talking about bonus points in games, Quinny. You don't like out. bonus points. Do you ever say it to your team? No, if we I do, but no, wins. but I don't. No, I don't. We talk about building scores and I think that's really important. You don't ever speak about bonus point wins, just puts a hex on it. So. But it's very simple to say and, and very obvious. It's a must-win game for Munster, yeah. but I'm sure Edinburgh will fancy their chances as well going to Thomond Park. Um, okay, we move along. We, it's, we're kind of limited when we don't have teams, um, team selections, but it's, uh, it's a game that hopefully the conditions aren't too bad and that Munster can kind of eradicate some of the er- errors that they had in Glasgow at the weekend. Um, just a quick chat on, on the, the Irish performance uh, in Paris. Um, what a what cracking was your take? game. Oh, I thought the game was unbelievable. I thought it was, I thought it was class. I thought the ferocity, I thought the intensity, France just blew me away. I thought what they did to Ireland's breakdown. And for me, 12, 18 months ago, Ireland would have struggled to come back into that game. I think that's a measure of the development and the evolution of that group. And it gives me a huge amount of hope going forward in terms of their ability to be able to match that. Um, I thought thought it was excellent. I thought, obviously, there'll be issues that they'll look at in terms of the breakdown and be the line-out. Definitely didn't function as much as we normally 
we're expected to. Um, but I do think that um, there were so many positives in in that performance. And um, well, yeah. from a monster from a monster point of view, okay, we're, we want we want to talk. We're talking about monster here. Joey Carberry's performance. Oh, he was excellent. Um, does that? Does that make a big difference to him going forward, confidence-wise, self-belief? Yeah. He's had so many disruptions. Um, looked a little bit nervous at times, but I thought overall the performance was very good. Um, that that's surely good news for Monster and for yeah, Ireland going absolutely. forward. Because and, and, sorry, I'm just is not going to be around forever. That's it. That's and also, I I nearly start him against Italy again and put Johnny on the bench and and work Johnny's fitness back in that way. I think that um, I think that he you know his performance deserves that. I think thought he was really good. And you know what else I loved really I, what I loved about it was his ability to manage the game, which sometimes I always thought sometimes it felt like you know we. We were playing rugby in the wrong parts of the pitch at times. I thought on, on at the weekend he was just really, really good. And I think that that will do his confidence wonders. And also, like imagine another start and the next level he can get going. So I thought it was yeah, really good. Conway was okay, very that's... good again. Uh, Byrne was excellent, and unfortunately for Omani, I hope he's okay. Um, yeah, he took a heavy he knock, didn't he? Um, when 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 Sir Boy scored that try yeah. in the head. Um, but look, it's the, it's a down week. Um, lots of players, 14 players released from Andy Farrell's squad back to all the provinces. And I'm sure all those players going back will want to try and play well and uh, get a good performance. I was that soldier a lot uh, over the years, training with Ireland, being in squads and being released back for games. And it's an opportunity to kind of take out some of your frustration and just play. So for Craig Casey, Dave Kilcoyne, I think um, there'll be a bit of pressure and expectation for them to to give a bit of solidity to Munster and an extra burst of energy. Edinburgh will probably have the same situation with some of their, their Scottish internationals back uh, and travelling over to Thoman Park. A wet Thoman Park on Friday night. Um, so we'll wait and see about that one. Um, just finally, um, we try and see, is there any other news or b- gossip or business? Um, You're usually the good one for this one. Well, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, Neil Fistler from the Rugby Paper is reporting on Monday. Now, I don't know how um, how reliable or reputable this story is, or is he just speculating? Um, he put up an article on the Rugby Paper saying that you know Graham Rowntree is going to be handed the, the the top job. Milton Haig is coming in, and Noel McNamara is coming in. He just mentioned those three three coaches. Um, again, it's something that's probably only speculation. What I'm hearing at the moment that there's some of the interviewing processes going on at the moment. Um, everybody in Munster would love to get some clarity on this and, and get an announcement. But I think it's there's been a process that that um, they've had to go through with the RFU and David Nusifora. Um, So hopefully quite soon we'll have some news on that. But again, that's all speculation. We have no... We can't clarify any of that. And lots of people will chance their arm speculating on this situation <laughs> in the next while. But my thoughts, um, you know, like I said a few weeks ago, I think Graham Roundtree keeps that bit of continuity. And then you've got to bring in, you know, coaches underneath, forwards coach, defence coach and attack coach. So we'll see how that plays out. Just the last piece of news that's come out is, um, and I think it's great news for Ireland and for Munster. Tyburn has signed a new yeah. three uh, three year contract with the RFU. Brilliant. I, I don't know if you saw it today. Murray Kinsella, uh, journalist, had a, a thread up of um, Ty Burns' journey to a central contract with Ireland. And if anybody um, has any interest in stats or like ridiculous facts, you should go and look at it. It is phenomenal to be able to see where he started. And also, any young player who doesn't make it first time around should absolutely read this thread because it is it is the uh, the absolute epitome of resilience and perseverance to go from being you know a half sub academy type of a player in Leinster while he was to a British and, and Irish line it's incredible pe- well, and selling pizzas to playing in Wales and and basically not getting contract for ages and then getting to Wales and then obviously British and Irish line and now central contract with Ireland he is having he's in the peak of his career so it's brilliant news yeah it's a, it's a great story and he's done brilliantly yeah. to do that. Okay, we've got to leave it there, Neve. That's it from episode 19. Um, 
of the Red 78. You've got to run to uh, do some skills training with the Irish ladies team, is it? Yep, with uh, training season. Yeah, yeah, we're a little bit late t- t- today with our podcast because you have a day job as well. So that was, <laughs> you had to attend to that. So don't forget to get in touch. Send us any tweets, thoughts, messages. You can send us to our personal Twitter page or the rugby channel or leave a comment on YouTube. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back next week to analyse the Edinburgh game. The Munster Rugby Podcast. Red 78 with Adam Quinlan and Neil Briggs. Nobody knows Munster Rugby better.